they always said I'm wrong But what they doing? Hey, I think they want me gone But I ain't going away They told me I was wrong Welcome in guys, I'm Tim Kelly of The Real Sports Talk, hosting the NFL Final Score on The Real Sports Talk Network right here on YouTube, as I do every weekend. Another crazy week in the NFL, was certainly fun to watch. Let's get right into it. The Broncos defeat the Bengals 31-23. Andy Dalton played a pretty solid game at times, outplayed Peyton Manning, who had two straight interceptions in the third quarter, but he comes back strong. Him and Eric Decker look just tremendous this season. Eric Decker makes a great catch to get the game-winning touchdown. Peyton Manning made a great throw. There's pass interference. Eric Decker pulls it down anyway. Just a tremendous job. The Ravens defeat the Browns 25-15. Brandon Whedon had two interceptions, which really cost the Browns. The interceptions have just plagued Brandon Whedon and the Browns this season. Justin Tucker, who has been one of the best rookie kickers I've seen in a long time, and then Torrey Smith, they combine to get the Ravens this win. It certainly wasn't pretty, and it hasn't been pretty for the Ravens since they lost Ray Lewis, and they just had that array of injuries that week. It's been difficult for them, but they are able to walk away with a win today, and their record still looks pretty strong as they still lead the AFC North. The Packers get a 31-17 win over the Colts, John, or over the Cardinals, I should say, who have dropped four five straight now since starting 4-0. John Skelton played pretty well. I think for the most game, or for most of the game, he outperformed Aaron Rodgers. The Packers win late because they were able to get in better field position and they capitalized better. John Skelton threw for more yards, but he didn't throw for as many touchdowns as Aaron Rodgers is thrown for. The Packers are beginning to look good. Their offense is firing in all cylinders as they once were. Their defense really just has not been as good as they were a few years ago when they won the Super Bowl, but to get 31 on a Cardinals defense that has looked pretty solid this season, that's impressive. The Cardinals, they just look more like what we expected them to be. They are what they thought, what we thought they were, and they look a lot more like what I was expecting coming in this year, a team that is a great defense, but offensively just really isn't all that impressive. The Bears absolutely smashed the Titans 51-20. to Jay Cutler throws for three touchdowns. Matt Forte runs for 103. Brandon Marshall has 122 receiving yards. They look great. They get to 7-1, and one, tied for the best record in the NFL. Chris Johnson had his second straight really good week. He runs for over 120 yards, but the Bears quietly have been the best team in the NFC so far, and people are just not taking notice of it, and I really don't know why, but if they continue to go under the radar, I think they will be a very dangerous team come playoff time. The Colts get a 23-20 win over the Dolans. Andrew Luck breaks the rookie passing record with 433 yards. Ryan Tannehill looks pretty good. Reggie Bush had a nice run for a touchdown today. The Dolphins have been a lot more watchable than I was expecting coming into this season. Ryan Tannehill has done better than what I originally anticipated he would. But in the end, Andrew Luck has looked great. They mentioned how good Bruce Arians has done with him. I couldn't agree more. And the best part of this game was seeing the post-game speech from Chuck Pagano, their coach who obviously has leukemia. He hasn't been able to coach since week two or three, I believe, but a great speech at the end, how he plan he, he was telling his players how he plans to hold up numerous Lombardi trophies and dance with his daughters at his wedding. Certainly a motivating speech if you are the Indianapolis Colts. The Panthers get a 21-13 win over the Washington Redskins. Cam Newton versus RG3, two that have been compared quite often. Redskins had nice jerseys today. If I wasn't an Eagles fan, I would probably go out and buy one of those Redskins jerseys. Unfortunately, uh, I can't do that because they're in the same division. But RG3 and the Redskins look nice in the jerseys. On the field was a little bit different. This was not their best game. RG3 didn't play horrendously. But Armani Edwards, who I interviewed with uh, Justin on this show before, he has an 82-yard reception, which leads Cam Newton, who had over 200 yards, did not throw any interceptions. You see how big that is when he's not throwing interceptions, how successful the Panthers tend to be. They get past RG3, who did outplay Cam Newton, Certainly threw the ball a lot more today, but he uh, was not able to get the win for the second straight week. The Lions win 31-14 over the Jags. They get back to 
500 at 4-4. Four four. Calvin Johnson finally has a big game. A lot of people talking about the Madden curse with him. Did not look like it today as he had 120 plus receiving yards. Blaine Gabber really, I haven't thought he was that, I haven't this season, he's really looked pretty decent to me. He had two touchdowns today. He did have two interceptions. Was 27-38 to 38 for 220 yards. I mean, with the, considering Maurice Jones-Drew has been out for a few weeks now, I've been impressed by what Blaine Gabbert's been able to do. Is he going to be the next Peyton Manning, or is he on the same level as Andrew Luck and RG3 or even Ryan Tannehill? Probably not, but all the people last week saying trade for Tebow, Gabbert sucks. I, I think you have a much better option there with Blaine Gabbert, and I think he's done a pretty solid job after a horrendous rookie season. The Texans get a 21-9 win over the Bills. They improved to 7-1. Matt Schaub, Arian Foster, and Andre Johnson lead the Texans as usual. The Bills have been extremely disappointing. Ryan Fitzpatrick will rack up the yards and then he'll throw interceptions. He didn't do that today, but they just could not get into the end zone. Fred Jackson's been disappointing. More or uh Mario Williams has been very disappointing for them this season. So overall, just I thought they were a ten and six team that could challenge in the AFCs would certainly make the playoffs, and that just has not panned out for them this season. Texans at seven and one continue to look very good. Seahawks get a thirty twenty win over the Vikings despite hundred eighty two rushing yards from Adrian Peterson, who quietly is just putting together a Hall of Fame career. Russell Wilson throws for three touchdowns, and the Seahawks today undefeated at home. They are now 4-0 at home, 5-4 overall. They look pretty decent, and they are going to challenge in the AFC West, or NFC West and as a wild card team this year. The Steelers get a 24-20 win over the New York Giants. Obviously, the Steelers didn't even fly into New York till today. They said they did not want to take up a hotel in New York from anyone that would need it because they were displaced because of Hurricane Sandy and believe me it was Hurricane Sandy not Superstorm Sandy but they didn't want to take up the hotel so they didn't fly until today they still looked great Isaac Redman 147 rushing yards the Steelers were down 23-20 they had a chance to kick the or 2017 they had a chance to kick a field goal to tie the game. They did a fake instead. Did not work, but their defense is able to get a hold. They come back, win this one 24-20. Uh, the Steelers have had games where they haven't looked good, but then you see games like this, and I still view them as a team that once they get to the playoffs, if everything is going right, they have a chance to make some noise. The Bucks made some noise today, and they have the last few weeks, especially their offense. They get a 42-32 win over the Oakland Raiders. Doug Martin stays hot. He had a great game last week on Thursday Night Football against the Vikings. Today, four touchdowns, 251 yards. Thank you, fantasy gods, because Doug Martin is winning me my league right now. Carson Palmer throws for 400 yards, four touchdowns. You'd think you'd win with that, but the three interceptions are really what killed him. Doug Martin has been just surpass anyone's expectations. The rookie out of Boise State, he's taken over for LeGarrette Blunt, who uh, was demoted to the backup, really hasn't looked very good this season. He has had just an incredible rookie season. He will be, if he continues on this pace, right up there with RG3 and Andrew Luck for rookie of the year. Because he's not as hyped coming in, he probably won't have as good a chance. He'll probably finish third, but right now, uh, I think he's right there with them for for that award. The final thing I want to mention in this video, I'm going to start doing a TRST NFL Final Score question of the week. This week's question, the better big three. Is it the Bears, the better big three of a team that is 7-1? Is it the Bears with Jay Cutler, Matt Forte, and Brandon Marsh, who I think has been the best wide receiver in the NFL this year? Or is it Matt Schaub, Arian Foster, and Andre Johnson, who I'm rocking the jersey of right now? Let me know what you guys think in the comments, because I think they've both been tremendous big threes. They've been fairly consistent, except for Jay Cutler, who's never really been the model of consistency. But uh, certainly they've been fun to watch, both these teams, and they've been led by these two big threes. The Bears have a great defense. The Texans have a great defense. But offensively, they've been led by these few. Let me know what you guys think. Hit me up on Twitter, at Cash. Kelly underscore TRST. Follow the real or like the real sports talk on Facebook, facebook.com slash the real sports talk. And if you're watching this on a different website, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Mr. Kelstar. I'll catch you guys later. Just a little around the corner from fear. Be there next year. I'm gone.